Hello, lovely podcast people. I hope you're well. This podcast is um, basically someone's commented on one of my Instagram posts. I actually can't remember which one it was now. I've got my phone next to me so I can look. It was the post where I said, let me quickly look. Have you heard these clowns trying to tell people that calorie counting is pointless? I actually want to do more on this. Um, around all these people essentially trying to sell books, make money, sell poo testing kits you know, to personalize your nutrition, which is absolute rubbish. You can't do that yet with these stupid tests, but whatever. So he commented on this post and um, I have just realized I didn't start this podcast in the right way. This isn't very good. L let me start again. Sorry. Hello, lovely podcast people. Um, very quickly, a mention to our new show sponsor, um, Mac Nutrition Uni. The, the this podcast will be sponsored from now on until the thirteenth of July by Mac Nutrition Uni. They've paid me inordinate sums of money to tell you how amazing the course is, and really, I would have done it for free if I'm totally honest. But because I believe in the product, I've used the product myself. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to sneeze. I will be mentioning. I'm going to sneeze. I think I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Look at that. Don't edit that out, Lucy. <laughs> um, bless me. Thank you. Appreciate that. Did anyone say bless me? Bless you. I will be mentioning Mac Nutrition Uni enrollments that open on July the 13th for a little while because, you know, I've got a one of the top rated nutrition podcasts in in the world. You know, that's kind of weird to say, isn't it? Anyway, so Mac Nutrition Uni enrollments are opening. If you really want to know more about it, go on to mac-nutritionuni.com. I'll probably have to do a bit more. They'll need to send me a script to say, you know, tell me what they want me to tell people in future. But anyway, there is now a prerequisite course, a short course that has been specifically written. If you don't have one of the prerequisites, quickly email the team over there. They're a great bunch of guys and gals. Guys is kind of unisex, is it? I, th I think it is. Oh, don't get me started on gendered stuff. Right, anyway, let's get on. This comment, how does... It, basically, this comment was, I thought, oh my goodness, there's so much here. I, can, I, I can't type. You know, Instagram's annoying. Anyway, I can't type the whole answer here. I really want to give him a good answer. And likewise, the way he or she, actually, I'm not entirely sure, or they uh, have commented is in a really polite way, often people comment and you, they're not teachable. They're not there, they're not wanting to, they're just like, but, but, but. I hate the word but when someone, yeah, but, oh my goodness, really, really grinds my gears to beyond belief. But they've been really teachable in this, um, I, I think, from my many, 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 many years of answering questions on the internet. So how does the hormonal effect that foods play on the body. Now, you know, instantly there's a little bit of maybe not quite correct terminology going on here, but they go on to clarify, you know, causing increases in ghrelin. Now, ghrelin is one of these gut hormones. Some people, you know, very niche people sort of talk about ghrelin belly. And realistically, more, it's more a case of maybe foods decreasing ghrelin is more what we are talking about or the absence of their ability to decrease ghrelin maybe factors that contribute to hypothyroidism so you know this it's such this is the problem when you get questions they're so convoluted like that that isn't that isn't simple i can't just go the hormonal effects because there's so many different things you could be talking about there and then downstream of that what what effects do they have on hormones as this person maybe wants to but really they care about outcomes and so for instance and, and I just wanted to have this discussion I can't remember you know this comment has just come in I've not prepared for this podcast but I know you know there's things in my head if I talk about research I'll you know I'll be able to pull the research up to support I've got a good enough memory I've read these things I've been doing this long enough that I can give you some good evidence-based answers without really kind of looking up the answer and I was just sort of here and close by. Well, that sneeze has made me, giving me a runny nose. Oh, this is going to be a nightmare of a podcast. I need tissues in here. God, did you see Amber Heard blowing her nose in the courtroom? Weird, wasn't it? Anyway, I'm going to have to cope. 
So this issue is, so I don't know if I've, I've talked about quality versus quantity. I feel like I probably have. And if I have, I will link you back to that podcast in the show notes for further detail. But when we talk about like quality and quantity is completely a false dichotomy. Now, the post that I did on Instagram was nothing about you should or shouldn't count calories. It was people who saying it's pointless, which there is a big crowd of people who want to tell you that, you know, the best way to work with clients is only using hand portions and thumbs and fists and whatever, because that's their method. They want you to buy into their method. And there's another group of individuals who want you to test your gut because calorie counting is so pointless. And, you know, there's this individual diversity and genetic differences and therefore calorie counting is completely pointless. Like it's just silly, silly, silly messaging that only comes from zealots, that only comes from, well, not just zealots, people who maybe just want to make a bit of money and therefore if they just mislead you just a little bit it'll help them to maybe sell a product or a course or a whatever so you know this this you don't have to choose between between quality and quantity and when i say quantity i'm generally talking about calories but of course we could talk about quantity of food as in food volume and there can be a you can have the same food volume but very different density of calories so uh, you know same amount of food but very you know high calorie foods or low calorie foods but this question here factors that contribute to hypothyroidism well If you get an individual who is completely deficient in iodine and that leads to towards hypothyroidism, it's a very, very, very different discussion from going, you know, you need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. Likewise, and this is a huge factor I want to talk about because later on, you know, they've gone on eating fast food every day. I'll read out the whole question in a minute. But the simple point is, is we do need to talk about energy. Like lots of people can't lose weight and they go to the doctor and their thyroid is fine. And it becomes a re- this whole idea, oh, it's my hormones, oh, it's this. Or, you know, a personal trainer or nutritionist or who, you know, whoever, heaven forbid, a dietitian. But even the doctors and the dietitians out there who are out to mislead people, because there are lots of them. The most famous doctors and dietitians are tending to be the ones that are misleading people because misinformation gets shared, misinformation gets engagement from both positive and negative individuals. They get famous. It's just this steamroller. If I could, when people tag me in, in bad information, I tend to not comment or like their comment because all I'm doing is helping that person's engagement. You know, if I feel like I can write, if I have time to write a long comment and explain why the post is completely wrong. The problem is if I do that, often it just gets deleted. So, but if I can do that, if it boosts the engagement, hopefully people see my comment and then they stop being misled and I've done some good in the world. But um, back on topic, I'm going to read you the full question quickly without trying to n- narrate us alongside it. So increases in ghrelin factors that contribute to hypothyroidism play into this that's the part i find confusing because some perspectives say that it's more than just calories in versus calorie out and that the effects on hormones play into the role of how the body responds to particular foods and whether or not they support weight loss and that the effects on hormones play into the role of how the body responds to particular foods. Like, again, I guess this is just, this is someone who I guess is trying to learn, is a bit confused. This sentence doesn't really make sense if, you know, I wouldn't say that directly to them because it kind of comes across as mean, but I'm obviously trying to help. Like, let's start with this factor. When you change your calories in or calories out, you impact the body's hormones. That's the right thing for your body to do. If we're starving, our body changes stuff. It changes our hormones. It changes our behaviors. There is a, you know, people talk about starvation mode. Typically, starvation mode is not a thing. However, the starvation response is a very real phenomenon that is 
pretty well studied and we understand it. I talk a little bit about it in my Tor talks because it's important for us to understand. So we, you know, we, again, calories, uh, calorie in and calorie out is this dynamic thing. It changes daily. If we increase calories, sometimes we increase calories out. And therefore, by understanding this dynamic thing, it, you go, well, this person's got hypothyroid, so therefore calories in, calories out doesn't work. Yes, it does. Because all that hypothyroidism is doing is changing that energy balance equation, you know, very, very simply for this discussion. Obviously, there are symptoms and, and stuff to do with hypothyroidism that are beyond, you know, like constipation, for instance. Oh, what's that got to do with calories in, calories out? Although ve having a very low calorie in can lead to a diagnosis of constipation when, you know, a particular type of constipation based on frequency of bowel movement and some of the um, diagnostic criteria for constipation being diagnosed. So, you know, this thing on ghrelin, it's like you you change the way you eat. Your appetite hormones will be affected. We know, again, if you eat lots and lots of sugar, for instance, there's this what's called an inadequate compensation for those calories. So they don't satiate us, make us feel full in the same way that other calories might. Like there is a a really good compensatory effect of eating protein. We understand that maybe if people increase their protein, they actually tend to eat less calories over the day because of the satiating effect, the impact of protein on ghrelin, this gut hormone, for instance. So when when we talk about these things, it's it still always comes back to calories in, calories out. People go, oh, it's not calories in, calories out. What if you eat protein, then you'll lose? Yeah, because it impacted your appetite and you ate less calories. And also ever so slightly teeny, teeny, tiny little bit more calories used in the process of metabolizing protein that the thermic effect of food is a little bit higher, but again, very marginal. But again, it's still a discussion of energy balance. Usually where this discussion of hormones comes into play, so I've, I've, I've kind of said like, oh, I won't go on, where this discussion of hormones is like insulin. Well, carbohydrates release insulin and insulin stops fat burning, so blah, blah, blah. But we have many, many, many studies that really have irrefutably shown that the insulin model of obesity, the carbohydrate hypothesis of obesity, and the proponents of that are even completely changing. You know, it's gone from carbs are bad to actually, oh no, it's sugar to, and oh no, it's fructose to, you know, because their model was really reductionist. It, it, it tried to whistle obesity down to one macronutrient um, when it's just not that simple. So usually that's where this hormone thing, now, you know, this individual has, has mentioned ghrelin and then they've mentioned, I guess, thyroid hormones is what they mean when they're talking about hypothyroidism. But again, it's the calories in and the calories out. Yes, it, like there's still the end factor we always have to come back to. Like, oh, but this food, if I eat almonds, you don't digest, you don't absorb all of the calories from almonds. Well, yeah. Therefore, the number of calories going in is lowered. It's still about calories. The, the point being is that calories are an inexact science. They're not as exact. This would be what the honest review would be. You know, the science of calories is inexact. We can't take, you know, we are using predictive equations to begin with. And the labels on food are predictive. Um, or estimates, sorry. And therefore, you need to have some consistency in your diet. And then you can just make changes based on a consistent foundation and then from a consistent foundation, you make changes in a direction and then you will make progress. This is why people see people doing things like Simming World, Weight Watchers or using something like my fitness pal to track and they have no consistency in the way they eat and then they don't really get consistent results.
because there are so many you know and they eat a, they eat out a lot and they're even they're then putting estimates into the my fitness pal which uses estimates and there's just too much estimation there's too much noise in the equation and th- there's some really practical advice for some of you out there i think on my flex success guest podcast which you should go listen to I talked about this. They they kind of said, you know, what's your one piece of advice? And it was such a boring but so useful bit of advice where I talked about this, you know, consistent foundation and making, you know, changes based on a solid starting point rather than just, oh, cool, shot in the dark of what a calorie counter says, shot in, you know, random foods each day, different foods, different meal patterns. And you just go, oh, I don't know why I'm not getting consistent results. Okay. I'm curious if it's more on a long-term basis of consuming foods that are nutrient-dense versus not, i.e. a person eating fast food every day and someone eating whole foods with the same amount of calories. Will they both lose weight if at a deficit? Yes, pretty much. But one person will feel like and the other person won't. Like, yes, again, you probably won't feel great. This is why it's crazy when people say, You won't lose weight if you eat processed foods. Like, we all know people who have done it. Um, And there, you know, Professor Mark Haub did the Twinkie diet and someone else did another, I can't remember what diet they did. And, you know, and even what was super interesting in that situation was he only ate Twinkies. Only, look it up, Professor Mark Haub, H-A-U-B. I had a chat with him. I was going to get him to do something for us once. And, you know, he only ate Twinkies. He, he worked out what his calorie deficit was and he felt terrible the whole time. However, his health markers, which he tested before and after, improved. I believe his systolic blood pressure, his diastolic blood pressure, I think his fasting blood glucose, uh, his total cholesterol, um, his uh, LDL cholesterol. All of these things improved, I believe, uh, you, you know, like at least... 80% of what I've just said, I'm 99% sure on. <laughs> That's a bit of a wrong. Um, I'm 100% sure, 60% of the time, every time, probably. Um, don't quote me on that. So... You know, that's an interesting one because we do have energy balance as a bit of like a master regulator for for those of us who are fairly inactive, maybe eat a bit too much um, for, for for the energy that we need. We, we are carrying more body fat than our body would be accustomed to, like to, is healthy for us, and our blood markers are showing us that. Long term, definitely not healthy and I'm definitely not recommending it. I'm just showing you that at least in the short term that he lost weight and he got healthier from these blood markers if he did that for a year or more obviously he's going to end up in a bad way so and and then they finish like how does food quality play into this so there, there is this you know now that I'm saying this out loud I feel like do you know what I maybe have spoken about this in a podcast before but you know there's a study where they they swapped all of the the grains that they were eating all for either processed grains or all whole grains their entire diet I, off the top of my head i feel like there was about a thousand calories but either all coming from whole grains or all from processed and they looked at some of you know this stuff that people are going oh if you eat whole foods you know that's the your gut will be able to take out more of the energy if it's processed but if it's whole then the the matrix of the food is it is going to change the amount that you can actually digest and absorb yeah we know that that's kind of the discussion around almonds um the fibrous matrix of of almonds maybe are doing this but in this study where, they, where it was a huge shift, I'm not just talking the client who's eating oats. I literally said this to someone uh, who, who I'm just sort of helping on, on the fly a bit with their nutrition. Their coach had told them to cut chocolate out and, they, and it was impacting their adherence. They're not telling their coach, whatever. It's messed up. It's a, it's a terrible relationship, if I'm totally honest. Uh, so, you know... Her kind of side coach, she's still got a coach and a side coach, and then me, who's the only one who knows what he's doing, you know, adherence is, is was waning. And they've been told they must cut this out. Why? Absolutely no reason. Um, 
So I'd look, just have you got any rice or sweet potato or oats that you're eating in the day that you just, you know, and then, yeah, like my third meal, I I don't need all the sweet potato, blah, 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 whatever. Cool. Isocaloric match it for your dark chocolate that you were mega enjoying in the morning in your porridge oats or whatever she was doing. Oh, you're amazing. Yes, I am. Thank you. You know, that's the real life scenario of what I'm discussing here. I'm not going eat Twinkies all day long. I'm talking about what I just did for that client that has maximized their progress because what you can adhere to is most important, not whether you're eating some, like as well, I'm pretty sure she's eating dark chocolate, which tastes like ass and not the kind of ass that you want to eat. It's horrid. And so... But but this coach is going, oh, you need to do that because we need to we need to tighten things up. We need to dial things in. Um, so, and in this study, <laughs> going back to what I was talking about, I believe the difference in calories was somewhere in the region of 60 to maybe 80 calories difference absorbed, you know, in the day. So they, they're eating two and a half-ish thousand calories and if they swapped all of the calories from whole grain to all completely processed food sources, they were able to extract an extra, you know, whatever. In this region, roughly 70 calories. I'll post a link to the study in the show notes. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, so, so if we did a quarter of that, we're now down to less than 20 calories, whatever it is. 17.5 or something. I can't even do the maths anymore. Yeah, I reckon it's about that. 70 divided by four. Um, we're going to have to work it out now. One. Yeah, yeah, 70.5. Look at that. That was quick maths. Could you do that? Um, Ollie's getting really good at, at mental arithmetic. I love it. Sorry. 17.5 calories. for if, if we're exchanging a quarter of all of our... You know, sit, stand up and sit down a few times. Cool, we're now equal. It's ridiculous. The, the discussion then becomes... Okay, if she swapped a whole of her porridge for like a, ground rice, is it? Is that one of the breakfast things? You you mix ground rice and then you put some sugar and water, and it's just this delightful, gooey, sweet something or other. Someone introduced that to me once. I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Left me feeling so hungry and so unsatisfied, and I realize that um, and then I was able you know if I'm eating at maintenance or gaining great I'll use that as a choice when I want because it tastes delightful uh, but when I'm wanting to r reduce ghrelin uh, or wanting to make myself feel full up and satiated I'm not going to choose that it's this is the this is real life this is the stuff this is the stuff that isn't sexy and doesn't sell like the stuff that sells is the BS, it's the rubbish, it's the, oh, I'm going to scare you about these things and tell you about this magic pill that's going to take your responsibility out of the equation um, and I'm going to sell it to you for a bit and then you're going to realise that it doesn't work and you're going to feel rubbish and I'm going to leave with your money. So this this discussion of like hormones, it's, you know, people go, oh, if you count calories and you're in a deficit, then your body's going to try and protect itself. Like, and then it'll slow down your metabolism, right? Even if you don't... So there was a guy who genuinely, his name's Phil Richards. I think he still might be in the industry. Um, hi, Phil, if anyone sends this to you. Are you still talking rubbish? He, he, he again, was like a Welsh version of Charles Poliquin or Charles Lolliquin, as we know him. Um, he's not in the industry anymore, fortunately. And... <laughs> Um, they both just talked rubbish to make money and it really frustrates me which is why I still give out to them and don't care and he Phil I'm pretty sure I've got a screen recording from like back, a few years back where he did a Facebook live or something and he literally was saying to people or it maybe I can't remember I've got I've got them all these things saved because if anyone tries to sue you and it's like well he said this about me and I'm like yeah well here's the proof and it's not true you can't sue me for telling the truth pal um but he essentially said that you when you count calories your body hears you i'm pretty sure that was the word that triggered me your body hears you right imagine imagine you're like 
right, how many, oh, I, so I had 80 calories from an apple. Your body's like, you hear that, lads? You hear that? I should give it, I should give the body a different accent. Um, I won't because I'll be accused of being racist or something ridiculous. But you hear that, lads? He's counting again. Right, batten down the hatches. You guys over there, adrenaline, come back in. You know, we're not doing that anymore. T3, stop that. Leptin, come at, come sit on the couch. We need to batten down the hatches. He's restricting calories again. We can't let him go. You know, so it's like, oh, you know, it hears you counting and it slows down your metabolism. Like, and, and so I, I, at the time I did a few skits in talks, like, imagine you just go, well, I'm, I'm not going to count in, you know, well, un, dos, tres, cuatro. you know, they don't, they don't speak Spanish. Is that Spanish I was just doing? Um, ein, zwei, drei, German, good. Un, well, what is it? Deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix, un petit peu français. My podcast is great, isn't it? You could listen to this like you listen to Radio 1 or RTE. Is that a Irish one? I think that might be a TV channel in Ireland. Or, that's R for those of you who speak English properly. Ooh, we're off topic, aren't we? But he said this, that you could hear the calories, that, that, that your body could hear you counting calories. It was crazy. It doesn't matter what diet you do, veganism, keto, you lose. You know, people go, you just need to eat better. You just need, I don't know where I've gone, but you just need to eat better and then, you know, don't count calories. I'm probably doing Joe Wicks, aren't I? You know, it's old school science. If you even if you don't count them, but and you're in a calorie deficit, your body will still respond the same way as if you counted them, and you get all these horrific London nutritionists and nutritional therapists, these like hippy dippy types going, oh, we need to nourish the body. We're going to nourish it with some warm water and some lemon, and that's breakfast. Sam Smith, that was Sam Smith breakfast from his nutritionist i won't name her oh close close but i'm not gonna um and he lost weight of course he did because you cut out an entire meal to nourish him with lemon and that was there honey i don't think there was anyway alkalize his body nourish his body and get him to install anyway no i'm going off now so quality quantity i hope you've learned something and i hope you've been somewhat entertained it always comes back to energy balance i don't say this because i i haven't got shares in big calories big energy balance i don't have shares in bomb calorimeters to measure calories in food i don't stand to benefit from this i'd love to be more interesting by telling you that oh i mean that's niche interesting isn't it but oh you need to send me a fecal sample, guys. Like, maybe it's just someone with a weird... Uh, no, I'm not going to say weird fetish because I'm not a kink shamer. You know, people's fetishes are theirs and they you should own them, right? But he's got a fetish maybe, you know, old old gut McGut specialist and he wants you to send a fecal sample and he wants to, you know, rummage around in there. A bit like Dr. Lol Gillian McKeith. She wasn't a doctor, was she? She lied. You know, looking through... People, you know, bags of feces and, oh, you need to eat more spirulina. <laughs> D these things don't work. DNA testing doesn't work. Um, this, this idea, constant blood glucose monitoring, it doesn't work. How your body responds to a food in terms of its insulin or glucose response. There, there aren't studies currently that can inform us on how to change our nutrition. Yes, we are genetically diverse. Yes, one person has a very different response to another person. But currently, the best thing you can do is, like, this is what some of these things do. They test your response to food and then they go, if you feel hungry after eating ice cream, you should probably avoid doing that if your goal is weight loss. Like, well, duh, didn't need to pay 150 pounds for a test, could have just asked me the question, which is what good MNU certified nutritionist, but um, look at that. That's almost like that thing in Radio 1 where they did, you know, they link, they did a link, they gave like one person, another person, and then they went through. Do you know that one? Anyway, about 10 of you are going, yes. It's called like, Something link, anyway. Unlikely link? No, I don't know. 
but I've linked it back to a good a good MNU certified nutritionist, or like even even just a basic, even a bad MNU certified nutritionist, even the worst MNU graduate. I don't know who you are. That isn't a person. That would be bad, wouldn't it? But even they would go, oh, you say you don't feel well or good or this way of eating doesn't suit you. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to help you. But, you know, a very, very, very good doctor <laughs> would be able to do the same. And dietitian, and nutritionist, whatever. But, but this is the thing, practitioners, it's boring. I, it, back in the episode when I talked about why do people go to food intolerance testing? Why do these nutritionists go to selling DNA testing and uh, because they were never taught properly how to work with real life human beings and they just needed something they needed a crutch maybe they wanted to make a bit of extra money but I'm giving the benefit of the doubt they needed a crutch to get people's buy-in okay if I tell you you're intolerant to these foods we get a starting point you're going to listen to me a bit more anyway I hope you've enjoyed that completely off the cuff. I'll get those studies added to the show notes. And um, until next time, much love.